It's been said, I know a thing or two about entertaining, setting a table, arranging flowers, selecting a menu, and inviting the ideal guests. And after all these years, I suppose you could say it's true. So here's my best advice for your next party. Serve the perfect roast. Today I'll teach you how to prepare three extraordinary roasts, starting with a spectacular prime rib. Then I'll share with you the easy to follow steps for creating a mouth-watering crown roast of pork, a stunning centerpiece for your next holiday meal. And finally, the answer to cooking turkey in half the time, an elegant turkey breast stuffed with a delectable, savory filling, perfect for any party. When hosting a special occasion, it's really nice to prepare a dish that makes an impression when you bring it to the table, such as a wonderful prime rib roast. And when you pair this rib roast with a Yorkshire pudding, prime rib is a classic holiday meal. Today we're using a three bone rib of beef, which weighs about seven pounds. It's hard to believe this is seven pounds, but it is, it's very dense. And this roast comes from the tender, leaner end called the first cut. It's an expensive cut of meat, so you want to make sure that you cook it to perfection. And uh, if you follow the directions, you will have a perfect rib roast each and every time. Now, some people call this a standing rib roast, but it's also uh, called a prime rib. And the term prime rib derives from the first step in butchering, when the whole steer is divided into eight large cuts known as primal cuts and one of those cuts is the rib or primal rib, thus prime rib. So this is first cut. It does not have a lot of fat. It has a nice coating of fat on the outside. The ribs are very, very strong and nice. And this is a well-trimmed, beautiful rib roast. And be prepared. This one costs a little bit more than $100. Seven pounds will serve, oh, at least eight people. Buy this at least one day before you're going to cook it because we are going to rub it with a marinade. Break 15 or so dry bay leaves in a mortar and pestle or in a bowl. Add about a third of a cup of sage leaves. This is, this is actually fresh sage. You can use dry or fresh and the zest, oh, I love the zest of orange. This is a third of a cup of orange zest. Add that. Salt and pepper, about oh, one and a half to two teaspoons of coarse salt. And some pepper, I'd say, oh, at least a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. Now mix this all together with about a half a cup of olive oil. The rib roast can stand in the refrigerator for one day to three days uh, to get a deeper flavor in the meat. And a similar result is achieved by simply salting the meat a day or two before roasting. You'll figure it out after you cook uh, a couple of these, you'll figure out which one, which style, which flavor really appeals to you and your family. But I assure you, this marinade is utterly delicious. So we'll put this meat right into a roasting pan. This is a very nice roasting pan. It is a uh, enameled cast iron, very heavy. And just spread your lovely flavorful marinade all over the roast. Cover it with plastic wrap, put it in the fridge, as I said, for at least one day. So here's the rib roast. It's been in the refrigerator for one day. I have not changed my clothes. We have swap outs on this show, luckily. And it is looking very good. We've taken it out of the refrigerator about three hours ago because you want it to be closer to room temperature. And you place the beef fat side up. It's resting on its ribs. Uh, the ribs act as a rack for the meat itself. The oven is preheated to 450 degrees, and you put the roast in uh, with the meaty side toward the back of the oven. And you're going to really use that high 450 degrees to sear the meat. 
and that will stay there for uh, 30 minutes. It's hot. Put your timer on and after 30 minutes, the temperature is lower to prevent the outside from burning before the inside is cooked. So this is um, really what roasting is all about. That initial high heat gives the outside a head start so that it will be browned perfectly in the end, but then you must reduce the heat so that the interior of the meat, that big piece of meat, will cook to the appropriate temperature. And we're gonna cook this rib roast to about 120 degrees, which will be a medium rare. So here's the roast. It took exactly an hour and 15 minutes after the first 30 minutes. And we've removed it from the oven. It's been resting here on the board for 20 minutes. Very important to let a hot roast rest um, at room temperature before you start to carve. Uh, you want the juices to be reabsorbed into the meat, and uh, you can see that we're not really losing too much onto the board. If I started to cut when it came right out of the oven, you would have a lot of juice everywhere. Now to carve, cut right along the bones, reserving the bones for the bone lovers, uh, and just remove them, and then you'll have a meat roast without any bones in the way to carve for your dinner. Mm, very tasty. This is a well prepared rib roast that responds nicely to this kind of carving. And you can see there's not a lot of fat anywhere there. Now to carve. So this is the end cut. There will be somebody at your table who will ask for the end cut. So you have two ends, front and back. But look at this gorgeous meat, just perfectly rosy, a little tiny bit of fat, and then as you go in, and this is a nice thickness, especially if you're gonna be serving this with the Yorkshire pudding and a traditional English style rib roast. Use a very sharp knife and carve carefully. Don't cut too much because you uh, just cut enough for the first serving and you can arrange it nicely on a platter. Mm, looks so beautiful. And a garnish could be as simple as more beautiful sage leaves like this. Fragrant too, very fragrant. That looks pretty. Some fresh bay leaves, if you have them, can also be arranged. But I think this is an amazing presentation. Now here is another spectacular dish to serve on a special occasion. It is a crown roast of pork, or it will be a crown roast of pork. The roast is formed from the rib sections uh, for two and tied into a circle to form a crown. And this dish is a British tradition dating way back to the Victorian era. When it comes to flavor and regal presentation, nothing rivals a crown roast of pork. So let me share my recipe with you. You'll need two racks of pork with 10 ribs. Ask your butcher to remove the shine bone, which is here. If left on, it would be absolutely impossible to carve the roast. So um, first thing you do when you get this home and are you ready to uh, start cooking it is to cut down right between the ribs, just deep enough so that the meat will bend. You want these ribs to bend a little bit because this is the outside of the crown. Make sure that the butcher Frenches the bones. And this is one serving. One rib is one serving. So this could serve, I would say, anywhere from 14 to 20 people. And the same on this one. Make sure your knives are sharp. This is beautifully sharp. It's cutting through this pork very nicely. This is great for a special occasion, Christmas time, New Year's Eve. Uh, it's also nice if your family loves pork to serve uh, on a holiday like Thanksgiving. So, which is traditionally turkey, as you know. See how it bends now? It wouldn't bend like that unless you did these cuts. Now, form your crown. The idea is to get this one 
attached to this one. We're going to use a needle and thread. Really, a needle, a meat needle, and some string, cotton string is good. So go through this way. And just go through here. It's fun to do something like this. Of course, if you have a really good butcher, he will do this for you. But it's also fun to learn how to do it yourself. Now tie that into a knot. And so I have that butted up. Now I wanna get this one a little bit tighter here too. So just take your needle and go through again a little bit lower. Practice being a surgeon. I've always loved doing this kind of creative cooking. And again, tie this. All these strings will be removed after the meat is roasted and it will hold together very nicely by itself. So that's one side. Do the same to the other side. Now to make sure that this roast stays in this beautiful crown shape, I suggest doing one more tie right below the ribs. And take your string and go right under the ribs and give it a nice little tight tie. This will ensure a crown when it comes out of the oven, which is, of course, the entire object of this lesson. You see, that holds it very nicely. So now rub all over with a generous amount of salt and pepper. Perfect. Now the meat should stand like this for 30 minutes. And while it's standing there, I'm gonna make a marinade that's going to be put over the meat in a small bowl. Mix parsley, oh, about two tablespoons is good. Uh, two cloves of garlic. A tablespoon of chopped sage. Sage goes very nicely with pork. And the zest of a lemon. On the standing rib roast, we used orange zest. On pork, I love the taste of lemon. And now add, oh, a tablespoon or two of olive oil. And just rub this all over the meat. And I find that really the most effective way to get this everywhere is to put it on with your fingers. Make sure you also get a little bit on the bones. Mm. It is fragrant and utterly delicious. So now transfer this roast to a 425 degree oven and roast for 15 minutes, then reduce the heat to 375 and roast rotating uh, halfway through until the meat is well browned and an instant read thermometer registers 140 degrees. That's gonna take about two hours and 15 minutes. So here is the gorgeous crown roast of pork. When you test for a temperature in a roast like this, go straight down on this side of the rib bone down to the center of the crown. It should be 140 before you take it out of the oven. And let the roast sit um, on the rack just like this, oh, 20 minutes or so, before you move it to a platter. And look how nicely it lifts. It's very heavy and very regal. Center it on the platter and take the strings off. So use a little scissor like this and pull all the strings out there. And now put your stuffing in the center. We've made a wonderful stuffing out of wild and white rice, celery and dried apricots and prunes, a stuffing that really, really goes very well with the pork. Just mound it up in the center. Can you imagine this on your Christmas table? That is glorious. And you can garnish with uh, pretty herbs around the base, some rosemary. Mm, it looks pretty just like that. You could even put some ripe plums. If this were for Christmas, it's starting to look not only like a crown, but also like a Christmas wreath. That looks very pretty. I think simple is better. And now for the crowning glory, don't forget the pantaloni tunis. And here they are. I've always called it that, who knows why. You can make these or buy them. 
I remember before I knew where to get them, I sat there with paper and little fringy scissors and made my own. Now, I think that's spectacular, don't you? Now, we've made some pretty elaborate roasts, the crown roast of pork, the standing rib roast, expensive cuts of meat, which, of course, make a big, beautiful impact when served. Uh, but here's a simpler roast, um, and one that's good for a big crowd if you want to make several of them, or for just a small group. Instead of stuffing and roasting a whole turkey, you can stuff just the breast to create an equally delicious and elegant dish that cooks in less time. And in this recipe, we use a technique called ballotine, in which uh, the turkey breast is boned, the skin is removed carefully, and I'm doing that right now by going underneath the membrane that holds the skin to the meat of the breast. And this is a half of a breast of a, a nice, like, looks like around a 12 or 14 pound turkey. It's a nice piece of meat. And if you need to use the point of a sharp knife to help release it, uh, do so. We don't want to get any holes in the skin. And we want to take it off carefully, leaving it in one whole piece. Because this is what we're going to wrap the stuffed turkey breast in. And the skin, this is the whole skin. And it does stretch, so that's what we reserve. We reserve that. Now turn the turkey breast over, and now we have to butterfly it. Uh, we want to get it into a shape where we can flatten it, stuff it, roll it, and then wrap it. Get all that. Okay, so um, the turkey breast has some natural lines of demarcation here. And with the point of a sharp boning knife, what we want to do is get it as flat as possible, all the same thickness. Now again, if you have a good butcher, ask him to do this for you, but you can do all of this yourself. It's not difficult. So already I'm getting it much flatter. Uh, this white tendon here, you definitely want to take that out. It will be a little bit tough. And you can, again, take this piece of meat and fold it back with a cut. And I think a little bit here too. So now put this in between some plastic wrap. It's like unfolding a book, really. Take a nice long piece. Place your meat on it, leaving a little bit of space at the end. And fold this over, leaving some space like that so we can spread out the meat and pound away. Now this pounding actually spreads the meat, breaks down the fibers, and um, gives you a uniform thickness which will enable you to stuff and roll. Okay. So there, that looks pretty good and I think I will be able to roll that uh, sufficiently well. Try to make as much of a rectangle as you possibly can because we're going to roll it this way. Okay, and here's our stuffing. This is uh, two cups of sausage and sour cherry stuffing with some onions, some bread squares, parsley, a f just a savory, delicious stuffing. Spread that out on the meat leaving a little bit of the meat clear at that end. Very nice. Uh, sprinkled with a little bit of salt, especially on the meat itself, and some pepper. And then you are going to roll tightly, starting with the short end. Some of the stuffing might fall out. Just put it back in. Okay, like that. And now, the turkey skin 
is going to go over the crease, the end, right here. And that will hold everything together with some string. So you want to cover the seam with the skin. I don't know, that looks very good. So once you get the skin covering the seam, uh, roll the turkey in a double piece of cotton cheesecloth. Make sure that it is cotton. The cheesecloth will help keep its shape. This looks really, really good. And then we're going to tie it up. And now to make it very even like a fran fancy ballotine, uh, you will tie along the plump little package. This is such a great way to eat turkey and not deal with the entire bird. Now since the ballotine is quite dense, by covering it in the turkey skin and the buttered cheesecloth, you reduce the risk of drying out uh, the outer layers before the roll is cooked inside. And so now, use six tablespoons of butter that's room temperature, nice and soft, and rub all over the cheesecloth. Nice thick layer. But with the butter, this is going to be delicious. You can put this right on the baking sheet. Now put this right into a preheated 400 degree oven and roast until the internal temperature registers 155 degrees. And that takes about 70 to 80 minutes. So now the turkey breast has rested out of the oven for 10 minutes. I am removing the trussing strings, which are coming off very easily here. Now unroll the cheesecloth and look what's inside. A gorgeous golden brown turkey breast. Mm, that, and it's juicy, I can just, I can smell it, I can see it. Really, really beautifully juicy. And look how pretty, very beautiful. Now, if you want to eat this warm, uh, just slice it into, I would say, probably like three quarter inch slices. If you want to serve it cold as part of a buffet, uh, you could do so uh, sliced, I think, a little bit thinner. Impressive, delicious, utterly gorgeous, healthy, and tasty. And out of one half of a turkey breast, you get this very, very beautiful dinner. So now this can be served just like that or with a very pretty garnish of fresh herbs, mm, like this fresh oregano. It smells so good. You can just put a little bit down the plate, just the tips. This would be very nice on a buffet. Now there, and you've made it yourself. Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed today's lesson. Now it's your turn to impress your family and your friends with one of these delicious roasts. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time on Martha's Cooking School.